Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX followed by a quick demo. DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX is a fully managed, highly available in-memory cache for DynamoDB that delivers up to 10x performance improvement from milliseconds to microseconds even at millions of requests per second. DAX being a fully managed service handles the cluster management, data population and cache invalidation. DAX provides API compatibility with DynamoDB. Therefore, it requires only minimal functional changes to use it with an existing application. You just need to point to DAX instead of the DynamoDB and all other API calls remain the same. DAX is fault tolerant and scalable. It prevents hot partitions and saves costs by reducing the read load or RCUs on the DynamoDB table. DAX is intended for high performance read applications. As a write through cache, DAX writes directly so that writes are immediately reflected in the item cache. DAX only supports eventual consistency and strong consistency requests are passed through to DynamoDB. DAX cluster has a primary node and can have zero or more read replicas. Upon a failure for a primary node, DAX will automatically fail over and elect a new primary. For horizontal scaling, you can add or remove read replicas. DAX supports server-side encryption and encryption in transit ensuring that all requests and responses between the application and the cluster are encrypted by TLS. And connections to the cluster can be authenticated by verification of the cluster certificate. DAX cluster is a logical grouping of one or more nodes that DAX manages as a single unit. One of the nodes in the cluster is designated as the primary node and the other nodes, if any, are read replicas. The primary node is responsible for fulfilling application requests for cache data, handling write operations to DynamoDB and evicting data from the cache according to the cluster's eviction policy whereas read replicas are responsible for fulfilling application requests for the cache data, evicting data from cache according to the cluster's eviction policy. Only the primary node writes to DynamoDB. The read replicas don't write to DynamoDB. For production, Amazon recommends to have a DAX cluster with at least three nodes to be fault tolerant with each node placed in a different AZ. A DAX cluster in an AWS region can only interact with DynamoDB tables that are in the same region. DynamoDB Accelerator Operations For eventual read operations, in case of a cache hit where DAX has an item available, DAX returns the item immediately without accessing DynamoDB. In case of a cache miss where DAX does not have the item available, DAX passes the request through to DynamoDB. When it receives the response from DynamoDB, DAX returns the results to the application, but it also writes the results to the cache on the primary node. For strongly consistent read operations, DAX acts as a pass-through and it passes the request through to DynamoDB. The results from DynamoDB are not cached in DAX, but are simply returned back. For write operations, 
data is first returned to the DynamoDB table and then to the DAX cluster. The operation is successful only if the data is successfully returned to both the table and DAX. So in summary, DAX is not ideal for applications that require strongly consistent reads or that cannot tolerate eventual consistent reads. It's not ideal for applications that are write intensive or that do not perform much read activity. DAX cluster has two distinct caches, an item cache and a query cache. An item cache stores the results from get item and batch get item operations. The item remains in the DAX item cache subject to the TTL setting and the least recently used algorithm for the cache. DAX provides a write through cache keeping the DAX item cache consistent with the underlying DynamoDB tables. Query cache stores the results from the query and scan requests in its query cache. Writes to the item cache don't affect the query cache. Query and scan results don't affect the item cache at all as the result set is saved only in the query cache and not in the item cache. Both item and query cache has a default TTL setting of 5 minutes. DAX assigns a timestamp to every entry it writes to the cache. The entry expires if it has remained in the cache for longer than the TTL setting. DAX maintains an LRU or least recently used list for both the item and query cache. The LRU list tracks the item addition and the last read time. If the cache becomes full, DAX evicts older items even if they haven't expired yet to make room for the newer entries. LRU algorithm is always enabled for both the item and the query cache and is not user configurable. DynamoDB Accelerator Write Strategies DynamoDB Accelerator supports two write strategies, write through and write around. DAX item cache implements a write through policy for write operations. DAX ensures that the cache item is synchronized with the item as it exists in DynamoDB. Whereas a write around strategy reduces write latency, it is ideal for bulk uploads or writing large quantities of data. In this case, the item cache doesn't remain in sync with the data in the DynamoDB table. DynamoDB Accelerator can be very helpful in the following scenarios. As an in-memory cache, where DAX increases performance and reduces the response time of eventually consistent read workloads by an order of magnitude from single digit milliseconds to microseconds. DAX reduces operational and application complexity by providing a managed service that is API compatible with DynamoDB. For read heavy or bursty workloads, DAX provides increased throughput and potential operational cost savings by reducing the need to over provision read capacity units. In this demo, we are going to configure DynamoDB Accelerator or a DAX cluster for our DynamoDB table. Let's open the DynamoDB console. We are going to create our first DAX cluster. However, before that, we would need to configure few prerequisites. A subnet group spanning multiple AZs, an IAM role, and security group. Let's create our subnet group first. A subnet group is a collection of subnets, usually private, that you can designate for your clusters running in an Amazon VPC environment. If you create a DAX cluster in an Amazon VPC, 
you must specify a subnet group. DAX uses that subnet group to choose a subnet and IP addresses within that subnet to associate with your nodes. We will create our subnet group for DAX with private subnets spanning across AZs. Enter the name as DAX subnet group and we will select our custom VPC VPC A and two private subnets spanning US East 1A and 1B AZ. Let's go ahead and create the subnet group. The subnet group has been created. Let's now create an IAM service role for DAX to access DynamoDB. For your DAX cluster to access DynamoDB tables on your behalf, you must create a service role. A service role basically is an IAM role that authorizes an AWS service to act on your behalf. The service role allows DAX to access your DynamoDB tables as if you were accessing those tables yourselves. You must create the service role before you create the DAX cluster. Navigate to the roles. We'll create a new IAM role for DAX to be able to access DynamoDB. Configure the trusted entity as AWS service. Let's search for DynamoDB and select DAX or DynamoDB Accelerator DynamoDB Access that allows DAX to call DynamoDB on your behalf. Name the role as DAX IAM role. It sets DAX as the trusted entity and provides full access permissions to DynamoDB. Let's go ahead and create the role. And the role has been created. Let's proceed to create our first DAX cluster. Navigate back to the DynamoDB console. In the navigation pane under DAX, choose clusters. We do not have any clusters. Let's go ahead and choose create cluster. In the create cluster window, we will configure the cluster. Name the cluster as demo DAX cluster. Demo DAX cluster description. For node families, we need to choose the node type for all the nodes in the cluster and you can choose from the various available options. A cluster basically consists of one primary node and can have up to nine read replicas. All nodes in the cluster must be of the same type and you cannot modify the node types for a running DAX cluster. We are going to select DAX T2 small to keep the costs low. The cluster size determines the number of nodes in the cluster. For a single node cluster, the cluster will consist of only one primary node. Whereas for a multi-node cluster, the cluster would have a primary node and multiple read replicas. You can choose a number between 3 and 10. For production usage, Amazon recommends using DAX with at least 3 nodes, where each node is placed in a different AZ. Three nodes are required for a DAX cluster to be fault tolerant. We are going to create a single node cluster for this demo. A one or two node cluster is not fault tolerant and not ideal for production use as the cluster can become unavailable or lose cached data. Navigate to the next set of settings. We need to set subnet group for the cluster. And we'll choose the DAX subnet group that we just created. DAX will assign network addresses to the cluster nodes 
from the subnets selected and subnets will also determine the AZs. Access Control To access the DAX cluster from your application, you must turn on inbound access on port 8111 for this security group or port 9111 if encrypted in transit. For now, we will choose the default security group which allows all incoming and outgoing traffic. Let AZ selection be set to automatic to spread your nodes evenly across the AZs for best availability. IAM permissions. We need to specify an IAM permission role for DynamoDB access. We will choose the DAX IAM role which we just created. Let's enable encryption at rest and encryption in transit. For parameter groups, parameter groups are sets of configurations that apply to all the nodes in your cluster and cover TTL for item and query cache which by default is set to 5 minutes. Let's use the default one for now. We are good with our configurations. Let's go ahead and create our first DAX cluster. The cluster creation will take some time. Let's wait for it to be created. And the cluster has been created and is in the available state. You can see the cluster endpoint, which can be used to connect to the DAX cluster through multiple client options available. Unfortunately, we can't test it using CLI. You can check on the monitoring matrix and alarms. Matrix around item and query cache hits and misses would be quite relevant in evaluating your cache performance. In events tab, it lists down the events that the cluster is performing. You can see an event mentioned, added node, Demo DAX cluster hyphen A in availability zone US East 1A. As it is a single node cluster, this is the only primary node that we have and it has been placed in the US East 1AZ. And the settings cover the or parameter group, the security groups, the network configuration, among others. You can now go ahead and update your application to route your interactions to DynamoDB via DAX. So that's it for a quick demo on DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX. DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX is a fully managed and highly available in-memory cache for DynamoDB that can deliver high performance. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. Alright, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.